Hello everybody and welcome to Stream City. I decided that I would like to add Pallet Town to Stream City. Pallet Town is the town from Pokemon in which Ash Ketchum resides. It is also the town that we start off in in the first generation of the games. But also the third generation, which is my personal favourite, I don't know why, I just really like the aesthetic. So, I have taken it upon myself to recreate Pallet Town in Minecraft and at the end of this video, we are going to find somewhere in Stream City to put it. There's a nice little Easter egg for anybody that wants to do some adventuring. I'd also like to point out that Stream City is, of course, downloadable for channel members, but more on that later. So, the first part of Pallet Town that I'm going to make is the Player House, aka your house. This is where we begin the game. As a side note, is there a Pokemon game where you don't just start off by waking up in your own bed? I actually can't think of one. Anyway, this house is delightfully simple and very satisfying to make. It's mainly comprised of white concrete and light grey concrete. There's one door, four windows, three on the front, one on the back, and that's pretty much it. The roof is where the actual house itself gets a little bit crazy. We have a nice vibrant pop of colour and it just seems to fit the shape of the build perfectly. It's mainly flat but it flares down on the edges. I really like it. In terms of outside design, there really is just a mailbox and that's just standalone to the left of the build. The next part of Pallet Town that I'm going to make is the Rival's House. This just so happens to be seven rows away to the right from our house and is identical in pretty much every single way, so I don't have too much to say about it other than that. The major differences actually come with the inside of the building, which we will discuss later. I mean, I honestly could have just copied and pasted the first house, using world edit, but I wanted to do things the old-fashioned way. I mean, even down to the mailbox, guys. Our rival so desperately wants to be us. With the rival's house made, there is only one more building in Pallet Town that we have to make. And this is, of course, the Professor's Lab. This is where we eventually get our first Pokemon. And, of course, where the Professor actually resides. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, that would be good old Professor Oak. The exterior of the lab is comprised of a layer of light grey concrete for the base, and then we get to use a material that I don't get to use very often, which is end bricks. It just so happens to match the texture almost perfectly. The lab itself is kind of interesting. We have two large windows on the front with four smaller ones above. We also have some canopies above the windows as well. They could also be shutters. We have a main entrance, of course. On the back of the build, we also have a small window, but on the roof, we also have a chimney as well. And as a slight side note, I did opt to go for the colour correct doors. So crimson doors for the actual houses and the warped door for the actual lab. So these are in tune with the actual doors from the game, but I'm not 100% sure on the texture. Oak, oak ones would probably be a little bit more charming. And thinking about it, shouldn't Professor Oak have an oak door? <laughs> decisions, decisions. But with the lab complete, it's now time for us to start refining the layout of Pallet Town. So, the first thing that I want to make is the flower bed that sits in front of our house and next to the lab. It almost turns Pallet Town into a nice square. So, the flower bed is comprised mainly of these red flowers, so I'm eventually going to place poppies in here. And it also has a fence along the back with a sign on it, and there is also a sign at the front of the flower bed as well. There is also a row of grass with fence on it in front of the lamp, and there is also a sign in the centre of the fence also. 
The next thing that I want to add is the water that is on the south side of Pallet Town. This inevitably connects to Cinnabar Island via Route 21. And once you obtain surf, you can just freely float up and down this long stretch of sea. Anyway, I'm using Podzol as the outline with cyan concrete as a base for the water and then I'm adding water on top to make it look more vibrant. And then we have some fence to place on the left and right sides. This will connect to the tree line. With all of these structures, buildings, landmarks complete, we can now add further detail to the layout. So this involves adding green terracotta around the buildings. They're, all of the buildings pretty much have a dense layer of grass around them with a path that leads to the entrance. We also have some patches of dense grass around the edging of Pallet Town, but there is a very clear pathway that is kind of in a shape of a waffle. You guys might be able to see what I mean once it's actually been installed that leads you all around the various landmarks of the town. Like, everything is connected so well you can literally walk around every single building and part of the town without too much obstruction. And that is of course the lime terracotta part that you can see down below. And of course on the north end of the town, just behind the rival's house, we also have Route 1, or at least the beginnings of it. Now for my favourite part of this, and I have no idea why I find this so satisfying, we are placing the border all the way around the edge of the town. So this is simply oak saplings placed one space away from each other. They border the entire town, and when I get to bone meal them, guys, honestly, there is no greater satisfaction in this life. Oh yeah, look at that. I just want to take this time to remind you that if you are a channel member, you have the option of downloading Stream City. It is Java edition only, it will be in the exact condition that you see it at the end of this video, and you will find a download link in the community tab, assuming that you are indeed a channel member. But with that complete, that is actually the entire outside of Pallet Town made, which is really awesome. I love how this looks. But of course, we're not just making the outside of all of the buildings, we are making the inside as well, starting with our house. On the ground level of the player house, there is a sink, stovetop, cabinet, what seems to be a bin, a television, a window, which we already have, a dining room table with a tablecloth, four chairs, a couple of potted plants, a rug which leads up to the stairs, and then of course the stairs themselves. Now unfortunately with how this is designed and made and how Pokemon works versus Minecraft, we can't copy these at a reasonable scale without having to shift some of the furniture around, but we still do have everything, it's just in a slightly different spot. With the entire ground level made, we are now going to install the second floor. So on the second floor, we have the top of the stairs and a rug adjoining those stairs. We have a sign on the wall. We have a bookshelf, a set of drawers, a computer desk with a PC on it. And we have a small computer chair that doesn't look very comfortable. It seems as though that that will cause major back problems. We also have a single bed and we also have a television which an NES is hooked up to with a rug underneath it. And it's at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, that I have made a revelation. If the entire second story is just our bedroom, where does our mother sleep? Huh. I'll let you think about that one. And that concludes the second floor of the house, and as a matter of fact, the entire house itself. Moving on to the rival's house, 
This is where things get a little bit messed up. So the rival's house inside is almost a carbon copy of ours. Now things are starting to get a little bit crazy. The only difference being, other than the fact that there is not a second floor, I have no idea why, there is a painting instead of a staircase. That's the only difference. So despite the lack of a staircase and second floor, there is a painting where the staircase would be. Only difference. That's it. That is insane. But it does make our job a lot easier. So once again, we just have a sink, hob, cabinet, bin, TV, window, dining room table, four chairs, part of plan, and of course, the one painting instead of the staircase. Moving on to the professor's lab. There is quite a lot going on in Professor Oak's laboratory, so in the back right corner of the room we have some bookshelves. Next to that, on the wall, there, there should be some some hanging signs that I've, that I've not included. We can let that go, right guys? Right? Well, next to the non-existent signs we have two desks, the first of which has two Pokedexes on it. And on the desk next to that, we have a PC. Next to that, there are two machines, and we've only made one machine. We can, we can let that go, right, guys? Right? Well, in front of these mysterious machines, there is an even more mysterious machine. It is seemingly an incubation chamber of some sort. I legitimately don't know why it is. I looked it up on the wiki, and it is described as a strange machine, so I guess that we'll go with that. There is also two stacks of books, or what seem to be books next to this, but I don't actually have room to place it. On the right side of the room, we have a table that has three Pokeballs on there. I think that you guys know what is in those. I did my best with the table and the Pokeballs, by the way, guys. Like, the table is a green top with like white legs and the pokeballs i mean there's not really an item which emulates them so we're just going for the crimson button and in the front of the lab we have two large bookshelves with a potted plant in the two corners as well Yeah, here's the thing, I actually couldn't let it go. So this is the space on the wall where these two banners are meant to go. So each one of these is meant to be like some text in an actual wooden frame. And I think that this kind of captures the look that we're going for. In regards to the books and the other machine, there's actually just not room for this. So I will let that one go. With all of the interiors of the buildings complete, that doesn't leave too much to do. But one thing that was bothering me was the outskirts of Pallet Town, the border that surrounds the town. So in the games, all of the trees are nice and uniform and perfect. They're copies of each other. They could even be made of plastic or even pixels for all I know. So I wanted to make mine look a little bit more similar. They don't have to be perfect, but at least, you know, sort of the same general height would be nice. It's at this point in time that I realized I did a big oops in front of the player house and I didn't actually include any flowers in the flower bed, which we are remedying by installing some grass and some poppies. Oh, and also two little things that were just, you know, um, driving me crazy on the inside. I forgot the bins in the player house and also the rival house. Oh, plus there is actually an additional bookcase in the rival house as well. Oh, and last but not least, we do also have the computer chair, which I forgot as well. But with that complete, we have finished Pallet Town. What a beautiful sight to behold. Now, where do we put it? Ah, I didn't think this through. So, there's not really a good place to place this right now in Stream City. The best area for this i think is with the holiday park slash the fair only because it's a more foresty area and i want this to be a bit of a secret of stream city so eventually when this area gets built up more and it gets fleshed out with trees and nature and more forest this will be harder to find so for now it's literally right at the end of stream city's main road so it's not going to be the most difficult place to 
to come across right now, but we work with what we've got. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe. If you are interested in downloading this world, you know what to do. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.